Hi everyone, my name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. Today I wanted to make a quick video to show you um, something that I think will be a good solution to um, an issue I'm having that um, is of my own doing and not really an issue, but something that I um, want to change. So as you may know, I have a sock cranking service on Etsy where you send me your yarn and I crank it either into sock tubes or finished socks for you. I'm really enjoying this service. I'm a little behind on my orders because I did get sick after my graduation. So thanks for your patience as I get caught up. Something that I have run into though, as I am cranking these orders and working through them is I put the yarn on these cones and it's really convenient, really handy. I found that I like stacking the cones for each order. So for instance, this is yarn from two separate orders, but let's pretend that this is, let's say you send me four skeins of yarn or three skeins of yarn and I stack the cones up so I can separate them and know this is so-and-so's order versus um, that stack is another person's order. I found that even if I'm stacking them, only two or three, they are not structurally sound just because of how the yarn is sitting on the cones and the new shape that it gives it. So I want to find a solution. Now this is kind of awkward, but this is my yarn swift. Um, it's one of the yarn swifts I have rather, and it's actually not the one I use most often, but I'm starting to use it more since I've had this sock crinking service and I'm really enjoying it. But I was looking at the base of this yarn swift and the way that this works is it's... Okay, so if you take it apart, it comes apart. Um... Okay, anyway, so the way that this works is that... Are you all done falling apart? Okay, this is not a reflection on the product. These are all separate pieces of wood that are supposed to do this. I just um, wasn't mindful of that when I took it apart. Anyway, these are two pieces of wood that fit together to make an X shape. Um, and, and there's a hole in these pieces where a dowel goes in to... <laughs> you get the idea. Without the dowel and um, without it having a firm place to sit, it comes apart. But basically, there's these moving pieces of wood that you insert a dowel in through um, a lined up channel through all the four pieces, and that is what allows it to um, spin. Now, I was thinking that if I could get something similar to this, two pieces of wood sliding together to make a base and then put just like a very cheap dowel from Lowe's or Home Depot through the channel. Then I could string essentially the cones through that dowel and they would have something to stand on. And then I could stack them as high as the dowel allows in order of each order. So I can be a little bit more organized with how my cones are and how accessible they are. So I was doing some research last night about how exactly I could do this. And I don't really want to saw anything. That kind of scares me. I I don't really know what I'm doing with carpentry. If you know, um, maybe comment down below of how you would approach this. Is there such a product that I could search that is essentially two ready-made pieces like this? If so, what is it called? But in the meantime, acknowledging that I do not have the skills or the wherewithal for that right now, but I do want a quick and maybe even temporary fix, I am gonna head to Lowe's and see what I can find. Let's go. And as always, don't forget, glasses fog up and it's not my fault. It's really hot outside and muggy. Thanks. So guess what? I left the house and I realized I was wearing my house crock, so I needed to turn my little butt around and go get some proper shoes on. And that's so much better. These are my outside crocs and they took me right to Lowe's. Hey crocs, if you're watching this, let's collaborate. 
So I found myself in the molding aisle looking at a bunch of different options of dowels and I'm thinking I want something a little thicker because I want to make sure that it's sturdy and it's not going to topple over when I have it stacked full of cones. I don't know if that will be too thick. I think this blue tipped one will be too thin though. So Los has background music, so I'm adding this voiceover to tell you what I was talking about, which is I was thinking maybe a corbel would be a good option. I could lay it flat and drill a hole and then stick the dowel in that uh, drilled in space, but I'm not sure how well that would work. And ultimately, I am going to choose to go try out my first idea. Okay, am I the only one who loves just poking around Lowe's? I think it's such a peaceful place. I love the smells, the sights, and... The trip to Lowe's is complete without stopping at the plant section. Everybody, unclench your jaws. I know you're nervous, but I did not get a plant. I know this is not what I came here for, so don't worry. I was focused, but I just like to look, okay? And I deserve a medal. Okay, our next stop was the garden center and I went to the terracotta pots because I figured the hole in the bottom of the terracotta pot is perfect for my purposes. I would just have the pot upside down and put the dowel into the hole. Please don't make any inappropriate jokes because um, that's going to stress me out. Okay, so I am testing out my theory here on the pot that I selected first. The opening was a bit larger than would work for my dowel, and I was wondering if that would mess up my cones or make it not very structurally sound if the dowel was able to go back and forth. So again, trying a new um, pot. Again, don't make inappropriate jokes because... Um, uh, yeah, that's stressful. Okay, so I am now trying the smaller pot, but I stopped because the dowel that I selected was too big for that opening. Oh my gosh, the jokes are just making themselves. Okay, so I'm really considering now what I should do because I don't want to get that mid-sized pot that I tried at first. This pot I just picked up didn't even have a hole in the bottom, so it wouldn't work for me. So I'm really debating right now internally between that first pot I tried and the second pot. I am leaning more towards the smaller pot just because having a smaller opening in my mind that leaves less room for the dowel to move around. Therefore, I think would make it more stru structurally sound. So that's the one I end up going with. As I'm watching this back and adding the voiceover, I'm noticing how prominent my purse is. And I promise that was not on purpose, but hey, I'm gonna take this opportunity to share with you. I am an affiliate with Portland Leather. This is their medium crossbody tote. I have a few of their bags and absolutely love them. So I'll put my link in the video description box. I think we're gonna go with this one, but for the size of the hole to make the channel with the dowel, I need to get a skinnier dowel. So let's go get that. Also, before I leave the outdoor garden area, I wanna see if I can find the type of plant that I put in one of my planters. I threw the label away when I planted it um, and I don't remember the name. So I wanna see if I can find it so I can take a picture of the label so I can always know what in the world that plant is called. Found it. Looks like it is a Pizzazz Nano Portugia. Portu Portuga? If you know how to pronounce that, let me know. I'm really happy that I know what it's called. So, okay, we gotta focus. Let's go get the dowel. All right, we are back in the molding aisle to get the correctly sized dowel. There's a metaphor in here somewhere, but I ended up getting the dowel that I originally thought would not work, and it ended up being the one that fit perfectly. All right, that was only $4.04, so I think that was a pretty good deal. We'll see how it solves my problem, if it does. My planter with that pizzazz plant, um, the flowers open and close throughout the day, so all of those yellow buds are going to be so gorgeous in a few hours. All right, I'm home, so let's test it out and see if it works. This uh, is a very cheap option. Like I said, it cost me $4.04. I think that's a great deal and a great investment for something that is a really quick fix. Might be a temporary fix, but I wanted this problem solved today. I did not want to have to figure out how to 
make it totally myself. So this is how it ended up. So let's see. I have six cones from Cat of Cesium Yarn. So let's just stack all of the cones from Cat's order to crank samples for Cesium Yarn. Um, Kat and her wife Penny hand dyed this yarn and I am really excited to be working with them not only for cranking samples but also for something exciting we have coming towards the end of the summer. Look at that! I can keep stacking. Um, I have the, oh yeah don't forget it can go out of the bottom. So I have the terracotta pot on a little table right here um, so it's not on the ground, but this is great. I'm going to keep this next to my machine and my cranking area. And wow, did I just, did I just solve my problem? I think I did. Let's see here. Look at this. This is too exciting. Wow. Okay, cool can keep stacking and stacking and stacking as long as, uh, or as high as the dowel will allow. I am so happy with this. I'm so proud of this. This is definitely like the most rudimentary, simple fix. I am obviously not a carpenter. Please don't judge me. If you have suggestions of how I might make um, the two wood pieces that fit together, I would still love to know that. I... This is not my expertise. This is not my area or my forte. So I am definitely grateful for any feedback or suggestions you have. But this was a quick idea I had last night when I was falling asleep. I knew I could do it in 30 minutes with very little money spent or time spent. And guess what? I was right. That's a good feeling when that happens. So here's a visual of how it works. Good grief, this is kind of graphic. Okay, so you put the dowel in the terracotta pot and then you slide the cones onto the dowel and you can stack them as high as the dowel is high. Uh, like I said, these cones are from Cat and Penny of CZM Yarns and I will link their website in the video description box. So now I need to get ready for my work day and try to stop sweating, okay. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to see my future content, that's how you're gonna do it, I guess. And oh, also you can follow me on Instagram if you don't already, just like here on YouTube. My Instagram handle is Rachel is Knitting, and I'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.